tell us a bit about what does the company do? When was the company created? Why you created? What problem you saw in the market that you wanted to solve? So Gremlin launched uh, two years ago. Uh, our founders came from Amazon and Netflix, and they'd been working on the problem of, of reliability of, of large distributed systems. Um, and one of the questions was, how do we get ahead? How do we predict um, where, a, where a system might fail, where an outage is going to come from? And uh, one of the answers they came up with was uh, around this topic of chaos engineering, where you intentionally inject failure into a system in order to see how it responds under stress in production in order to, one, identify weak points so you can proactively fix them, and two, gain confidence in across your entire engineering team about how that system will respond to failure so that you can, so that one, you're more comfortable uh, and more familiar with the system's actual behavior in the real world, um, and, um, and, then you can, and then you can proactively um, write better code as you go about your day-to-day -day business. If you just look at the, the whole growth of Kubernetes, there are a lot of new use cases coming in every, every day, every weekly basis. So how do you see the whole you know, kind of evolution of Kubernetes ecosystem itself? So, so Gremlin just launched uh, native support for Kubernetes in our product. Um, so you're, you know, one of the things that you refer to is the, the, growth, of, the growth of Kubernetes um, and the way that companies are, are using it in, in a lot of different ways to give themselves better scale, um, to, uh, to, to have more reliable systems, and, and to get more engineering velocity. Well, one of the things that Kubernetes does is it, it abstracts, it, it has all this magic under the hood, but it abstracts away from the user what's happening in the system. Which means you know you still lose track of of what's going on underneath the hood. It's hard to monitor. It's it's hard to it's hard to be confident that um, things are going to behave properly, like your auto scaling rules and, and what have you. So what Gremlin allows you to do, um, and it's a it's a really fine grained tool. But what Gremlin allows you to do is um, select Kubernetes objects um, and inject failure into them intentionally and carefully so you can control the blast radius and do this in a safe way and say what happens if we create failure in this part of the system how does the rest of the system respond so inside of our ui you can say i want to you know target this kubernetes object whether it's a whether it's a pod or, or what have you um, and you know shut down a machine or create latency or black hole a request um, and the way that this works with you know you're you're asking a question about use cases so um, as people are adapting Kubernetes to their, uh, their architecture, their environment, to solve real business problems, um, they, have to, uh, they have to work with it within that complexity and, and tame it to understand how these systems work. And, and one of the best ways to do that is using is, is a, the process of chaos engineering. Because you have a, a big distributed system that has emergent properties. We don't know how it's going to respond at um, various critical moments in the business when you know the scale peaks out um, there's a lot of uncertainty and so the the best way to get ahead of that and be confident both from an engineering perspective as well as a business perspective is to have explored those potential edge cases or those failure scenarios proactively so that um, so that you know that you've tested all of those edge cases and have confidence that you've built a reliable system. Also, uh, I mean, when you look at cloud in space, mostly we look at the state less workloads, mm -hmm. but then also there are state for workloads. Mm -hmm. So do you also like uh, work in that? Yeah, that's a, that's a really common use case. Um, that's where that's where like um, our uh, chaos engineering shutdown attack happens. Um, so you've got this data. Um, you want to make sure that if if you lose the machine where that data resides, that it's going to um, that that you're not going to lose that data, or that the system can still function. And this was one of the original use cases that Netflix had some open source projects around because um, they were migrating to the cloud. And a lot of companies now are kind of where Netflix was a few years ago. Like they're migrating to the cloud. They're usually adopting Kubernetes or a service mesh or something like that as they're doing it. And because they're, you know, when you migrate to the cloud, you you have less control over your hardware, and so you need to take additional precautions to make sure that, um, you know, you've got this third-party service, you know, managed service from one of the clouds. Um, that if if you know one of those hosts shuts shuts down or anything unexpected happens, so you don't lose that data. So one of the things that Netflix did was they would actually. Um, run regular shutdown attacks across parts of their infrastructure 
Um, so their engineers were pro forced to proactively write code that um, wasn't dependent on stateful machines so that it could be stateless. But this is an incredibly common use case that a lot of our customers think through on a daily basis. So who are your uh, you know, uh, typical customers and clients that you're serving or helping? So Gremlin works with, with uh, engineers who are um, our, our core, the first handful of customers that we got were like site reliability engineers and folks who were responsible for uptime and managing incidents. And they wanted a proactive way to get ahead of those incidents, to, re to reduce the frequency of them, to, um, to resolve them quicker, to detect them faster. Um, and what we're seeing more and more is companies who um, companies are realizing that downtime um, has a very real financial cost to their business. You can say it's really easy for like e-commerce. Um, you know, if you're down for an hour, you you lost revenue for an hour. But um, more and more businesses outside of that are realizing that the impact of downtime isn't just you know lost revenue. It's engineering productivity. It's feature velocity. Um, there's brand and customer trust impact, and sometimes sometimes stock impact. Um, and so anybody who's who's realizing that downtime and customer experience has a direct impact on their business is taking a close look at reliability and, and rolling out an initiative to the business, not just the engineering work with the business, to make reliability and uptime a priority for their business. And that's you know usually when chaos engineering becomes um, comes a talking point and, and when we start talking to a business. If you look at chaos engineering, uh, is it a technology or technical problem or is it a people and educational problem? And how do you address the two? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, it's always it's always both. Anytime there's technology, you know, you have to have tools and you have to have the, the people and culture side. And there's a need for um, there's a need for engineering organizations like you've know, got you know we have DevOps, um, which was a, a cultural shift as much as a technology shift. And um, technology empowers culture, and and you have to have a healthy culture in order to use a tool properly. So um, what we are focused on right now is we believe that Gremlin. Um, you know, the, Gremlin is the answer to how do you write more reliable software and how do you build a more reliable internet. But as a part of that, um, we're doing a lot with our advocacy team and our success team host regular boot camps. Um, so we hosted one la last night actually at, at KubeCon um, and had about 30 engineers in who were running their first chaos experiments, learning how to control the blast radius, learning how to do that safely inside of a demo environment so they can take that practice back to their, back to their teams. Um, we think that the way to uh, we think that you know with the advent and, and the expansion of, of SRE as a practice that chaos engineering is going to become more and more important to to businesses and so one of our goals is regardless of the software that you're using um, we want to put the discipline and the best practice of chaos engineering out into the wild so that um, no matter what company you're at, no matter what tooling you need, um, you have a best practice from companies like Amazon and Netflix, folks who have done this before, um, so that you don't have to figure things out for yourself for the first time. Uh, thank you, Austin, for talking today. And you know, I actually look forward to seeing you again next time at KubeCon and other event. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having me.